Fanny Willis is freaking out right now. I mean, she's freaking out unless she has absolutely no sense of right or wrong. If she's a complete and total psychopath, which I don't believe for a moment. I mean, when you think about what's happening right now, it goes beyond anything anybody could have ever even imagined. Seriously, it, it, it goes, let me just get down to brass tacks. If this case gets bounced and it goes to this prosecutorial authority in Georgia, they figure out where it goes next. That means that the case is not dismissed. But Fanny doesn't get it anymore. She's done. She's through with it. So it goes to another prosecutor. The other prosecutor is stuck with this dog of a case or could theoretically drop it, which would be even funnier, or could trim it down, kind of pare down, maybe rework some, some uh, uh, you know, bad, unnecessary counts. It's, it's, it's a complete piece of dog crap is what it is. Or if a Republican gets it, let's say they just don't win. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but you just don't win. You don't throw it. You just say, okay, I'm going to take this case to trial. I'm a Republican. It will benefit Donald Trump immeasurably by having this case acquitted or having him rather acquitted. But I'm just not going to go out of my way. And he can always use or she can use the fact that it was a lousy case to begin with. But here's the best part. Could you imagine what it would have looked like had this gone to trial if Fanny Willis, who would never have tried the case, but let's assume because she's such an egomaniac, what if she had cross-examined Trump? Just imagine what that would be like. Cross-exam. Can you imagine this, you know, talk to the hand, you know, this guy, whatever, this, 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 this angry arrogant, entitled affect is, I would have given anything. It would have been the greatest television in the history. Forget the last Seinfeld or little Ricky being born or whatever the last episode of MASH. This would have been it. To see Fanny Willis, who was emotionally, intellectually, legally, spiritually, academically, I think I said intellectually, unable to really grasp the nuances of one of the weirdest cases ever. This being racketeering among about, what, 15 people who don't even know each other. Don't even know each other. No coordination. You know, imagine being a member of the Gambino crime family or being charged with being a member of it and you don't know anybody. How is there a Gambino crime family if the people in it don't even know they're in the Gambino crime family? I didn't even know who you are. Who are you? President Trump. I never met him. I don't know who he is. Or if I know him, I know of him. We never conspired to do anything. It was a dog. All because Fanny Willis decided, I'm going to do whatever I want. And if you question me, I, who have lived in this artificial, rarefied world of delusion my whole life, where I'm superior, I'm smarter, I'm entitled. The whole case makes no sense. Did you love when she said, well, I didn't, couldn't live in my house. Well, I had to move out. You know, my father and I were in together because, you know, all these people, and I got the, you know, this, this, the threats. 50 years old, I had, to, I had to live away from, I had to leave. I was the threats. What about your father? Oh, I left him there. Wait a minute, what? What? Well, you know, there's, wait a minute. You're worried about, what about your father? What if, what if let's say, somebody from the, from the Medellin cartel or the Cali cartel or somebody doesn't know you're gone? Did you have a security contingent at this house? Well, no. What? What? So it's confused. So the story is, imagine, and, and here's, here's the best part. It doesn't even make any sense. The story that she brings up, you see, this is the part, this is where she's so bloody stupid. She volunteered things that she didn't have to volunteer that wouldn't have been a problem had she just 
not said anything. But no, no, she had to tell you why. No, you don't understand why I left and why I did this and why I... Nobody's asking you. You volunteered this. And then once we hear the reason that you volunteer, that becomes the subject of cross-examination, the subject of collateral impeachment. Next thing you know, we're off in that rabbit hole. This is either good news or bad news for President Trump. It might have been good for her, for this incompetent staff to basically try him. If you're going to be tried, better Fanny and these numbnuts than anybody else. That's number one. Number two, if it goes to a, to an, another prosecutor who knows what they're doing, they might be able to make chicken salad out of chicken. You know, you never know. The third thing is you, you, you have to pursue this. It, you, you, you have to claim an allegation of, of either improper relationship or, or, or uh, uh, some type of conflict of interest. But let me just say this again, and this, this is what's critical. Fannie Will listed all this on herself. All, she, she, she brought this all on herself. And Wade, Nathan Wade is thinking, what the hell am I doing? I got to go back. He's not even, ma- he's still married. Technically speaking, that divorce is still pending. He's got to go back to that judge and says, oh, by the way, these alleged perjurious statements you made involving this divorce, involving this one, you want to talk about that? When you answered no to questions as to infidelity, when in fact you were under the framework of the question, unfaithful, you were extra maritally occupied. You answered, no, you did it. You said, and in his own mind, he said, well, you see, in my mind, in fact, Fanny kind of referred to it. She says, in, in, in my mind, the marriage was really over, you know, kind of like spiritually. She had perhaps, you know, cheated on me. So in my mind, that marriage is over. So even though we are legally married, and that's all that matters in the divorce case, since we were legally under the state of, of Georgia married, even though that was the case, I thought that it'd be best if I just kind of, sort of, you know, kind of put that aside and consider us not married, at least in my heart, so that when I answered, no, I have not had extramarital affairs or relations when I wasn't really in my own mind, amorously what and then later on they said what did you did you change this for what for privilege reasons did you change answers for what fifth amendment no privacy privacy well i didn't want people to know was it how stupid are these people my favorite is the fellow with that with that chia pet bun on his i don't know what the hell that i i i have never seen these are lawyers these are lawyers who members of the court, officers of the court, pass the bar. My God. This one's bounced because of alleged sexual battery. This one's walking around looking like, I don't know what. It doesn't matter. Look, a hairstyle is one thing. You know, who? far be it from me. Have you ever seen this, this rogues gallery of liars, prevaricators, this parade of mendacity, duplicity, misrepresentation, fabrication, lying. Don't be surprised if there are independent bar movements and motions and uh, proceedings to have their ticket, their licenses, punched, suspended, or disbarred for basically coming into court and lying, feeling that I don't have to. Not only that, the contempt that Fannie Willis has for the court for Judge McAfee, the contempt, bringing up the race car and the father. Well, I always say it's a black thing. I don't want to get racist, Your Honor. What? I don't want to get racist. I'm white. You're black. You're going to get racist with me. What do you say about what? No, about black people who always, you know, we always hoard cash. Do you see when uh, (laughs) she didn't know what hoard meant? She also had a hard time with continents. Belize, what kind of continent? I don't know. I don't know exactly what a continent is. I mean, this is, 
this this is junior high stupid. Seriously. This goes to show you. Well, you know what? It doesn't show you anything because she is the the anomaly. Most lawyers, men, women, black, white, gay, straight, whatever it is, are professional, are competent, and mildly intelligent. Mildly. Who don't have this infection of arrogance coursing through their bodies. So President Trump, remember, are you sure you want to get rid of this prosecutor? Because they're not going to dismiss the case. You sure? Because anybody you get my cousin Vinny is going to be better and tougher than this work over here. She's, she's just out of her tree. So I know you had to do it, but you know, you might have been better off. And what I wouldn't give to see that cross-examination. Imagine Donald Trump just looking at her, smirking, hitting every trigger point. Because remember, no other case has this. The New York case involving Judge Engeron and Letitia James, the AG, you don't see this. In the Alvin Bragg case, the first case, you don't see this. In the in the other case, the Mar a Lago case, the document cases, there's no there's no crazy prosecutors. You know, Tish James may say things that are, quote, inappropriate, but she never violates rules of decorum. You never question her sanity or maturity. She never speaks of an arrogance. I'm sorry, people may disagree. She's doing her job as an elected official and an attorney general. No, no, no. No, this is this is like watching a Karen. This is like, you know, she reminds me, I swear to you, I know I've said this before, like one of these airport Karens who flies over the counter and starts to choke the the uh, flight attendant. I mean, this is this is just I've never seen this before. This haughty, rude contemptuous, self-important arrogance, unearned and unbelievable. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Please hit the like button. You know how that thing goes. And comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me. Comment as you see fit.